in this part of your workbook, we're going to take a look at your team. You've listed them out uh, there in the in the workbook, and then you've gone and plotted them on the the disk of matrix, which sort of looks like more outgoing, more reserved, or more task oriented, or more people oriented. So now we're going to look at it from a different perspective. We want to look at how they fit within your team, how everyone fits within a, a scale of skill set and attitude fit. Now this can be a little bit of a tricky one and I'm gonna throw a few caveats out there before we get started. The goal here is not to define who is the, the good people on your team and who are the bad people on the team and great, we can peg them over here because we know they're not a fit for our organization. Look, that may be true. There may be some people who are not a better fit. There are often underlying reasons why that might be. So, and we're gonna explore that uh, throughout our, our coaching. What I really wanna get a feel for here is how you perceive them right now uh, in terms of the fit. So I'm gonna show you the model here, and the model's pretty simple. We've got two scales. On one scale, we've got skills. Now skills being skill relative to the position they, they fill in, in your business, right? You might say, hey, um, someone doesn't have really good mathematical skills, but if they don't need that in their role, then it's, it doesn't matter. They might, they might be really good with people, and they're all about servicing people, so therefore they'd be highly skilled because that's the, the role they're in. And on the other scale is the attitude. Now, attitude is gonna vary depending on your business. Um, some businesses is all about, hey, we just go hard and we work hard and we're all serious and that's the culture of the business and they're the sort of people you want. Others might be more fun. Hey, we've gotta enjoy ourselves. We've gotta sort of get along and have a bit of fun while we're doing it. Maybe that's your culture. Another one might be, hey, we're willing to stand up and say no and we're willing to, um, to, to really come out with new ideas or whatever it is for you, you know what your, the attitude characteristics are you're looking for and that's what we're measuring against what is what do you, how do you perceive the attitude of uh, of each of your people so what you're going to do is you're going to go back to that uh, chart that lists out all, all your people and just take the number you don't have to write their name on here but just write the number so say the first one might have been mary and you might say listen mary she's really good on the, on the skills her, she's phenomenal at what she does but she has a good days and a bad day. Sometimes she's on, sometimes she's off. So I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. I'm just gonna put her over here. She's just, just on that side of attitude, but really good on the skills. And then you might say, John, look, John, his, uh, his attitude is unbelievable. The guy will do anything. However, his skills are a little bit lacking, right? He's, he's got some learning to do, so he might be here. Number two, so that would be high on the attitude, but only midway up on, on the skill. And I want you to go ahead and plot each of the, the people because at the end of the day, what we've got here on this chart is you've got your, your A players, right? They're the high skill, high attitude. Then you've got your Bs, who are your low skill, but high, high or good fit with attitude, I'm gonna say. And then you've got your C players here, very good at what they do, but cause a, you know, a little bit of ruffling of the feathers of other people, not really a fit for what you're looking for. Then you've got your Ds, uh, who are kind of neither, right? They're lacking skills and they're not a good personality fit for the culture. So obviously we're gonna look to say, you know, how are we gonna develop a team of, of mostly A's and mostly B's? And when we have that, and that's when we're gonna get to recruiting um, and also working with, with your existing team, we're also gonna say, once we've got A's and B's, what are we doing to move these B's up? And how are we managing the A's to keep them there, keep them engaged and keep them uh, operating in an environment that they're gonna thrive in. So then we're gonna talk about C's and D's. And again, so the tendency is for people to say, my A's and B's are my good people, my C's and D's are my bad people. And look, sometimes that might be true. There's also cases, I've seen many cases where someone has a C player and it's because of certain uh, ways that things are communicated through misunderstandings, through lack of clear expectations, it can be all sorts of reasons, it can be around leadership style. There's a lot of reasons why someone might be over here. Our Ds, you know, it's, it's tougher to, to move those guys somewhere on the chart, but it's still possible. So look, don't draw any uh, foregone conclusions, but after you, you plot this, you might have some light bulb moments, and I hope you do, that says, ah, you know, that kind of makes me see things in a different way. You will probably have that, and that's fine, but let's not start going out giving pay rises and sacking people as soon as we plot them on, on the graph, all right? Let's have a chat about that. So go ahead and have some fun with it, and I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts around it.